Well, it is finally here. We're talking about September, the month in which Palestinians will ask for recognition of statehood before the United Nations. What are the pros and the cons? We'll talk about them today on Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Well, thank you for tuning in to Politics and Religion. And um, as uh, you know, if you've been listening this week, Irvin has been over in Israel and uh, broadcasting live from there. And uh, at this moment, we are in the process of getting him reconnected because I guess uh, yesterday he was in uh, Jerusalem and now he has moved up uh, north of there and Maybe the connection is not quite as strong, so if you are uh, interested in calling in and being on the air with us today, he will be back on the line here shortly, so uh, you can definitely do that by calling one eight seven seven in time We will be taking your calls today, but while we're waiting, I always like to take this opportunity to inform you of some upcoming conferences, because you definitely want to know when we're in your area. Um, if you miss an opportunity to come to one of these conferences, it's, it's really a huge opportunity missed because um, when we come to the area, usually he teaches, believe it or not, um, on subjects that he's never spoken on before. Uh, he's been doing that a lot lately, and so um, these conferences are so vital to be able to come to and be a part of. So I do want to at least mention a couple of them to you uh, right here from the get-go so that we can um, let you know when we're going to be in your area. First off, in uh, this month, September, we're in September now, uh, on the 10th and 11th, he is going to be at Family Life Church. That's at 4362 Highway 59 South. That's in Livingston, Texas. So if you're in the Livingston area, you definitely want to check that out. That's going to be on the 9th and the 10th of this month, a little bit over a week away, at 7 p.m. and 11 a.m. That's on a Saturday and a Sunday, and uh, if you want to register for that conference, you can definitely give us a call at 1-800-END-TIME or visit the website. Registration is not required, but we definitely encourage you to uh, register so there's enough seating, and you also get included in a DVD giveaway drawing that we do uh, right there at the conference, so you definitely want to register. And, and by the way, if um, for some reason you do not uh, catch this information that I'm giving to you now, you can always go to endtime.com slash conferences and view all of that information there. The full conference listing is right there on the website. Um, later on this month, on the 15th, uh, he's going to be back in South Bend, Indiana, back up uh, towards his hometown, right there at the U UPC of South Bend. That's at 4609 South Ironwood Drive, South Bend, Indiana, 46614, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. that night. The following day, he's going to be over in Indianapolis, uh, which is going to be at Lawrence Apostolic Church, and that address is going to be 6202 Sunnyside Drive, or excuse me, Sunnyside Road, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46236, and that'll be at 730. Now, um, if we, for some reason, uh, lose him a little bit later or uh, something like that, we can get back to those conferences, and I'll give you a couple more, but not to bore you with that, uh, I do want to mention one other thing to you. Um, he's talked about this every day, and we've been doing a huge push for the last uh, several weeks, even months, uh, for our translation project. And, uh, and I wanted to take an opportunity to at least mention that to you uh, right here in our first segment because, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get this in your mind and in your heart because this is a huge deal. Um, in fact, I think it's probably, and I've heard him say this even, it's probably the most important thing that we've done uh, here in the history of end-time ministries because up to this point, 
uh, and I might, let's see, I want to get this number right. Uh, up to this point, even in English, we've only been able to reach 1.8 billion people, which is a lot of people, granted. But Jesus told us to go and to, to preach the gospel to the entire world, not to just 1.8 billion, which is less than, like one-fifth of, of the, the whole world's population. So right now, uh, with this translation project, we're doing really good. We're over halfway there. Um, the last numbers I received, we were around, around $78,000. But to get all of these, uh, understand the end time uh, lessons translated into the six major languages uh, of the world, it's going to take about $120,000, which is a lot of money. But with everyone uh, chipping in just a little bit, we can definitely make it there. Uh, we can definitely do this. Uh, Jesus told us to go into all the world and to teach the gospel, to preach the gospel. And we've tried our best to do this over the past 25 years or so. Um, since end time started, we've done the magazine, the radio program, and now uh, end of the age. And uh, if, if you haven't had a chance, by the way, if you're listening, obviously you're, you're into politics and religion and the radio, but um, if you have not had a chance to check out end of the age, our television program, I would highly encourage you to do that because it is a marvelous program. And it's actually all of our Understanding the End Time uh, series, our new Understanding the End Time series, uh, that has been played so far along with several other things. So I want to encourage you to to definitely check that out because it's such an awesome, awesome program. You're tired of watching junk on TV today. You're tired of your kids watching junk on TV today. Um, that is definitely something you need to get tuned into and check out. But anyway, those TV programs are actually the things that we're going to translate. Those are the things that we're trying to get translated into the, to the major um, languages of the world so that we can get that message out there, um, because we don't want just people, um, <clears throat> we don't want just the people that can understand English to, to be able to, to, to know about the signs of the end time and to know what the Lord has called Irvin and End Time Ministries to do, but we want the world to know. We want every nation and every kindred and every people to know um, what the Bible says about end time prophecy and what we're doing in, to, in, in today's world and how it connects uh, to the Bible. So, I want to encourage you, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, to give towards this project, please do so, because you're helping us reach this world. Uh, not everybody can go out and, and go over to Africa or go over to the Middle East or, 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 uh, or South America and reach out to those people. And what better way can we do that but then translating all of this product into that language so that we can connect with those people um, they can download it online, so the so the uh, shipping is absolutely free for them. Um, I mean, it's it's the easiest way uh, to get this there and and cover the most people. So we definitely want to encourage you to do that. If you want to donate, you, there's two ways you can do that. First, you can call one eight hundred in time, and you can talk with our operators. They are standing by right now, ready to talk to you. We have wonderful people here that will help you with that. Um, or you can visit intime.com, and in the top. Uh, top right hand corner there's actually a donate button and from that button you can go uh, right to the translation project and you can even pick if I if I remember correctly or if I maybe they've changed it by now uh, I thought you could pick what language you could uh, donate towards but anyway we definitely want to encourage you to uh, give towards this translation project because it's a really really big deal but Jason I am with you now yes sir welcome uh, thank you very much. Uh, we had some temporary difficulty uh, connecting. Uh, I have moved locations from my location over the last two or three uh, broadcasts. I am now in Tiberias, Israel, which is in northern Israel. And sometimes when you change locations, you get a different internet connection. It can temporarily affect our uh, connection there. But I think we're good to go now. Um, and. Well, we've had a wonderful day here uh, on the tour of the Middle East, of Israel. I know a lot of people that have uh, friends and relatives on the tour are anxious to hear what's happening. I mean, this tour has just been incredible, uh, not only just enjoyable, but the wonderful presence of God just seems to have been with us everywhere we've gone and today was probably the highlight of the trip so far because today was baptism at the Jordan River and um, we had we baptized 17 people today 
and just a wonderful presence of the Lord at the Jordan River. And it's it's almost become an, an accepted fact that in our tours, uh, when we get to the Jordan River, it's just a highlight because after we were finished, we got back on the bus, we began to sing songs, and everybody was just all smiles. Uh, so anyway, very wonderful. Uh, we're now at the beautiful Leonardo Plaza Hotel. Uh, looking out my window, I see the Sea of Galilee. Um, and this, this, of course, is the body of water where Jesus came walking across the water in the middle of the night to the apostles. So, uh, you know, when you're here and you know that this is the same place where that occurred, uh, it will almost make your hair stand on end just thinking about it. So just uh, a great time. And we also, uh, we went to Megiddo today. And since the um, End Time Ministries is all about letting people know that we are approaching the time of the Battle of Armageddon, uh, when we say end time, by the way, and I, I haven't said this for a while, so I'm going to take a moment to say it now. A lot of people, when, as soon as you say end time, they say, oh, end of time, when's it going to happen? Uh, well, the end of time is not going to happen for another thousand years. But when we say end time, we're not saying the end of time. We're saying the end of the time of human government and the beginning of the kingdom of God. The Bible prophesies very clearly that there's a time coming when uh, the human governments of man will be put down and re replaced by the kingdom of God. That happens at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And all the prophecies that are supposed to be occurring immediately before the second coming of Jesus Christ are, in fact, occurring right now. Well, the, the whole transition takes place uh, at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. So our entire group stood today and on the city of Megiddo overlooking the plain of Megiddo, which is a valley also known as the Valley of Jezreel. It's about seven miles wide, about 15 miles long. And let me tell you, you do not have to use your imagination to think about the Battle of Armageddon when you stand there because you're standing there looking at the valley. And the Bible describes that the armies of the world community will come down from uh, the northeast. And as you're standing there, you can look toward the Golan Heights. You can look toward Damascus, Syria, which is about 40 miles or so. Damascus is from the plain of Megiddo. So we're standing there, and you know with modern warfare, 40 miles is almost nothing. And so as we stood there uh, talking about what the prophecy says, uh, there are many accounts in the Bible of the Battle of Armageddon. However, in the book of Revelation, there are, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, four accounts of the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, the first one is in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 16. The second one is in uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. That's where the seventh trumpet sounds. The kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And then uh, there is Revelation chapter number uh, 14, where you have the two uh, harvests, one of them being the vine of the earth being cast into the wine press of God uh, outside the city of Jerusalem. And we'll finish up with the other one when we get back from this break. Uh, however, so just a wonderful day here on the Prophecy Tour 2011. Maybe you've listened to politics and religion for years, and every time you hear us talk about End Time's free weekly e-newsletter, you say to yourself, today is the day I go to endtime.com and sign up. But the teacher from school calls, Junior sick. Your husband texts you a picture of the mailbox that Susie ran over while learning to back out of the driveway. And as you try to get out of the door, your boss is waiting for that detailed report that was actually due yesterday. All of a sudden, convenience is not on your side, and now the e-newsletter is the last thing on your mind. We now offer an easy-to-use feature that is perfect for those of you that have little time to spare. Just text the word end time to the number 22828. It's that easy. Text E-N-D-T-I-M-E to the number 22828. That's E-N-D-T-I-M-E 
to the number 22828. For years, I've been interested in Bible prophecy, but never could find the truth until the day that I stumbled upon a radio show called Politics and Religion. Two of my questions that no one could ever answer were, who will be the Antichrist and will Islam ever control the world? The day I listened to Politics and Religion, Irvin just happened to be talking on this subject and recommended the DVD, Will Islam Rule the World? This lesson based everything on scripture and it gave me answers that I've been seeking for a long time. Get your copy of Will Islam Rule the World? Call 1-800-END-TIME. Tired of the same old boring TV? Tired of the not-so-reality TV? We have the answer. Tune in to the exciting show that keeps you up to date with current events. Hope. Meaning. Answers. That is the message that Urban Baxter's End of the Age series represents. You can tune in every Sunday on Daystar at 10.30 p.m., Mondays on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., or tune in to TBN on Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. Get informed today. So we're talking today about the Battle of Armageddon and also talking about uh, something that is supposed to happen seven years before the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, the Bible very clearly states that uh, there will be a peace agreement of some sort struck concerning the borders between the Palestinians and the Israelis uh, and also the status of Jerusalem. Well. Uh, there have been negotiations taking place for about 20 years now trying to get an agreement, trying to bring a peace agreement between Palestinians and Israelis, uh, but it just has not worked. And the reason is because the Palestinians say they want, um, they want to return back to 67 borders. Israel says these borders are not defensible, and that's the reason that we had the 67 wars, because the uh, the Arabs exploited the indefensibility of the borders, forcing the uh, Six-Day War of 1967. Therefore, to go back to those borders is simply inviting disaster. So they're saying they want to renegotiate the borders, uh, and the Palestinians say, oh, no way would we ever do that. Consequently, there's no peace. Well, over time, um, Sentiment has sort of swung toward the Palestinian side at the United Nations. As a matter of fact, the United States and Israel can hardly win a vote there ever, uh, and they lose most votes by incredible, laughable margins. I mean, I've seen votes uh, concerning issues where it ended up being 153 to 2. Uh, so it was the United States and Israel against the entire world. Uh, so the if the entire UN General Assembly gets to vote, it's almost assured that the Palestinians win the vote. But here's what's happened. Palestinians have decided they cannot negotiate with Israel. Israel is too strong militarily for the Palestinians. So Mahmoud Abbas has renounced violence. Anytime there is a terrorist attack, he comes out and he condemns, he condemns the violence. Consequently, He's starting to win uh, the public opinion struggle on that side because here he is condemning all this violence. He wants to do this peacefully, yet Israel will not give him what he wants. And so now that he's going to the United Nations and he's asking for recognition of Palestinian statehood from the international community on the basis of 1967 borders with Jerusalem, with East Jerusalem as the capital for the Palestinian state. Now think about this. No negotiation whatsoever. Now he's asking for an edict to be issued from on high from the world government body called the United Nations saying Israel, this is what you must do. Palestinians, this is what you must do. And if the United Nations would actually issue such a ruling and then Israel refused to comply now, all of a sudden, Israel is not fighting the Palestinians anymore. Israel is fighting the world. Now, that's the corner that Israel has been painted into through the very skillful maneuvering of the Palestinians. But I've got to tell you this. It's not just the skillful maneuvering of the Palestinians. It's not just that. It's much more 
than that. I mean, what it is, it is in fact, let, let me see how I can put this so you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, it is a spiritual thing. The Bible teaches that at Armageddon, this will be more than a political thing, even though it's going to seem like it's political. It's, in truth, it's going to be the final battle between God and Satan. So this is a spiritual thing that's going on here. Almighty God said 37 times in the Old Testament, I will put my name in Jerusalem. Well, now then, the United Nations has taken a direct stance against God, denying Israel's right to have her capital in Jerusalem. I mean, the United Nations recognizes the capital of every other state on this planet, every single one except for Israel. Israel said, Jerusalem's our capital. It was our capital for a thousand years. And the United Nations says, uh-uh, sorry. And so all of them put their embassies in Tel Aviv, 30 miles from Jerusalem. Now they're, they're playing games here because they then established consulates in Jerusalem because that's where the government is. So they still do the business in Jerusalem, but they still say, that's not your capital. Okay, so the battle is really for control of Jerusalem, and this battle is between Satan and God. Now, don't ever forget it. This is a direct battle between Satan and God. Now, once you see it that way, everything becomes so very clear what's going on here. So, what's really happening at the United Nations this month? It's scheduled for September the 20th. I read another article today which said it may uh, end up on the 23rd. I think that's when Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinians, is scheduled to speak at the United Nations. Oh, don't I wish I were going to be there because it's going to be an incredible time. I, I still am tempted to see if I can arrange two there. Well, anyway, so that's where we are right now. And the Palestinian Authority says if we appeal for full membership to the United Nations, the U.S. has veto power there, and the U.S. says that they will veto, which we're assuming they will. All the reports are saying, yes, they will veto. But an article I read just today says maybe it would be smarter if they don't even apply for full membership. Let them simply apply for uh, an upgrade of where they are right now. Let me see if I can read a little bit uh, of this to you. It looks like a sure loser. The Palestinian bid for admission to the United Nations as a sovereign state, never mind that a large majority of the UN General Assembly would vote yes. UN rules clearly state that all applications must first pass the Security Council. That's that exclusive club of 15 nations, five of them permanent members including the United States, Great Britain, China, Russia, and France. And those five have veto power. Any one of them say no, it's a done deal. The other ten members are the rotating members, but that's where the power lies. So uh, the uh, United States stands poised to exercise its veto. Now, if, w if the Palestinians don't go there, what are they going to do? Well, then comes the fallback option, including one alternative that experts on international law describe as so attractive to the Palestinians, there's a strong case for making it the first option and just skipping the U.S. Security Council. Instead of asking for full U.N. membership, Palestine can ask to be admitted as an observer state. That's one rung up from the observer entity status it has held since 1974. So... Such a promotion comes with two advantages. One, it requires no Security Council and so amounts to a sure thing because the Palestinians are always able to get a majority in the UN General Assembly. Now, the other privilege, it very likely opens the way for Palestinians to level charges against Israel in the International Criminal Court. Now, way back in 1998... We're talking about 13 years ago. I don't know whether you were listening to this program way, way back at that time or not. But uh, we had major articles in our magazine back then, screaming at the top of our voice, the establishment of the International Criminal Court 
was a huge irreversible leap into one world government. Uh, President Clinton, in his speech in 1997 at the United Nations, as he welcomed the United Nations there, said it's time for the establishment of a criminal court. The machinery kicked into gear in 1998. Uh, they met in Rome, and they actually approved, after 31 days of negotiation, they approved the Constitution for the International Criminal Court, and then they launched the uh, ratification process. It was ratified by 2002, and then they started putting the court together. Well, now the court is starting to become the 800-pound gorilla in the living room of the world's nations, because here's what's happening. In the last two years, they've issued a, a warrants for the arrest of two sitting heads of state, Mr. al-Bashir of Sudan and Mr. Muammar Gaddafi. So Mr. al-Bashir, he's got to plan his travel very carefully because if he goes to any state, if he goes to any state that um, is a member of the ICC, they are duty-bound by treaty, which they have signed, to arrest him and to haul him off in handcuffs to the International Criminal Court. Now, we're talking about a head of state here. We're talking about like President Obama. So that's why President Obama has to make very careful plans for his travel, lest he would, uh, I mean, let's say that the ICC would file a complaint against him for all the people killed in Afghanistan. What if the International Criminal Court said, you know something, uh, he never gave uh, Osama bin a trial. He just moved in and murdered the guy. Therefore, we're, we think he should be put on trial for murder. Now, they're not going to do that because the United States would bring the entire structure of the international community down, but uh, it is not unthinkable. I mean, it's not unthinkable that the ICC would accept a charge against George W. Bush for going into Iraq without UN approval. Uh, and, and as a result, how many have died there? 100,000? Some people say a million people have died since 2003 when we invaded uh, Iraq. So what's the point? The point is, and according to this article, this article comes from Time Magazine, actually, uh, they're saying that if the Palestinians were granted this status of observer state, now then they can start filing charges against the uh, nation of Israel and the officials of Israel. So what happens when Benjamin Netanyahu, there's a warrant issued for his arrest. Now he can still come to the United States because the United States is not yet a signatory to the International Criminal Court, but Barack Obama has already said that he wants to sign on to it. So... Uh, now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about it's September. This thing is coming up in 20 to 3 days. This whole decision is coming up. And the International Criminal Court is a big deal. I mean, already Zippy Liv and he's had to cancel travel plans lest she be arrested. I mean, ever since the Operation Cast Lead of, what was it, 2008, when Zippy Liv and he was the foreign minister at the time. So consequently, she was in on the decisions to launch the attack uh, against Gaza, which resulted in a lot of deaths. And the international community then said uh, Israel used disproportionate force. I mean, this world government thing is closing in on this, starting to grab nations by the throat. Well, that's what we're dealing with today. We'll be back in a moment. 17 million Shanghai, China. 13 million Moscow, Russia. 20 million Mexico City, Mexico. This is the population of just a few cities that currently don't have understanding the end time. But imagine the billions of people in places like Paris, France, Rome, Italy, Cairo, Egypt, and many other cities throughout the world that currently need the end time message translated in their language. Irvin Baxter has a burden to get the end of the age series, understanding the end time, translated into the eight major languages of the world. The translation project will take a total of just $120,000. If you'd like to participate in reaching the world with this message, call 1-800-363-8463. Your gift of one, ten, or $50 will make a difference. 
Call 1-800-END-TIME or visit endtime.com to help reach the world with the End Time message. Do you ever hear the news and know that something's just not right? Do you ever read about politics and think what is going on? Maybe you wonder what all this means for you and me. Well, we finally have some answers. Irvin Baxter has a 12 lesson series called Understanding the End Time that has aired throughout the world on TBN and Daystar. This series contains lessons like United States discovered in the Bible, Islam and Bible prophecy and the seven trumpets. The Bible says in Daniel 11:33, they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Would you like to be one who understands end time events so you can instruct your friends and loved ones? If your answer is yes, then don't miss out on understanding the end time with Irvin Baxter. Call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 and request your copy of Understanding the End Time. If you would like to be on the program with us today, the number to call is 877-END-TIME. And if you would like to contribute to our translation project, uh, we're now over $79,000. we are actually over $89,000. We did hear from the person who had put the match grant on the table for Italian, which has now been met, thanks to all of you out there. And uh, he is out of his particular home country right now, but he said in a little over a week he will be back and will be able to wire the money to us. So uh, he's acknowledged that he heard that we did meet the match grant. So thank all of you out there. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, so that means we're only... $31,000 away. That's where we stand today. And we will complete this drive. And I am so thankful to God and thankful to all of you out there. Because what this means is that the most critical prophecies of the Bible that the world desperately, and I'm using all capital letters here, desperately needs to hear and to know, they're going to be available. In another of the languages of the world, the major languages, that 90% of the world will now be able to view and hear our DVDs teaching the United States of the Bible, New World Order is World Government, Islam in Bible Prophecy, Holy Roman Empire Reborn, The Antichrist and the False Prophet, 666, The Mark of the Beast, uh, Israel's God-given destiny, Israel, God's prophetic time clock, The Second Coming, The Seven Trumpets, the coming one world religion part one, coming world one world religion part two. Uh, I mean, all of these lessons. And oh, by the way, maybe you don't have them for yourself yet. If you don't, I would urge you do your very best to get them. The number to call for that is one eight hundred in time to be on the air with us eight seven seven in time. Now we're talking today about September. This is September first, and this is when this is the month. That it's been anticipated for a long time that the Palestinians are going to ask the United Nations to recognize a Palestinian state within 1967 borders. Now, if that happens, and if Israel is occupying the territory of the newly declared Palestinian state, then what is that going to mean? What will happen? Will the United Nations then demand that Israel withdraw? Will the United Nations vote for such a situation? The United General Assembly's vote is not binding, and yet it has huge PR significance. It's going to be a ratcheting up the, of the pressure. You say, I just don't think anything like this is going to happen. Oh, yes, it's going to happen, because we have absolute proof from the Scripture that the United Nations is going to invade the nation of Israel. It's not going to happen for seven years or eight years or so, maybe nine but we're getting perilously close to when it will happen. Let me give you the scripture that specifically states that all nations, that the world community will invade Israel. It's Zechariah chapter number 12, pardon me, chapter number 14, verse number 2. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. There it is. 
God's going to motivate them to come down. But you know, there's another place that says the devil motivates them. Revelation chapter number 16, verse 12 through 14. It says, I saw three spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are the spirits of devils working miracles together, the kings of the earth, to the battle of Armageddon. So Satan is inducing them to come down. He thinks it's his idea. And God is standing behind the scenes, allowing it, and even motivating it. He says, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. Because when they come down against Jerusalem, it's going to look like Israel is done. It's going to look like Ahmadinejad is right, that Israel is going to be wiped off the map. Israel is going to be driven into the sea. However, just when it looks like Israel's horribly overmatched, divine intervention. The Bible says it this way. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon the ungodly which they have ungodly committed. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 14, uh, Then shall the uh, Lord go forth and fight against those nations. I'm talking about the nations that he himself has gathered down there. In Ezekiel, he said, I will be sanctified in the eyes of the nations of the world. They're going to know. I mean, let's, let's see when NATO fights against Israel. And that's the way it's shaping up because NATO is now acting as the uh, army of the one world government. And it's fighting the wars of the United Nations. NATO has been in fighting against Gaddafi to get rid of the Gaddafi regime. For some reason, the world community wants Gaddafi gone, probably because of oil. They want to take control of that country that contributes 4% of OPEC's oil and very conveniently located. I mean, they've got ports right on the Mediterranean. You don't have to mess with going through the Suez Canal. You don't have to mess, mess with going out of the Straits of Hormuz. All you have to do is pull up to the loading docks uh, at the different ports of, uh, of Libya, and you're on your way accessing the entire world. No wonder it's tempting. Well, anyway, so, so what's the point? The point is, with all the political maneuvering, the Arab Spring, uh, whether you want to call it the Arab Spring, the Arab Winter, whatever you want to call it, in the middle of it all is the hand of Almighty God. And it is a screaming sign that the second coming of Jesus Christ draws near. Okay, now, the reason I bring that up is because the most critical thing in your life more critical than the next business deal you pull, the next job change you're going to make, the next house you're going to sell or buy, the next anything. The next anything, ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing is are you ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? I mean, put your lots, put your gamble on that one issue, that's the one issue that marks success or failure. When the second coming happens, if your feet leave the ground when that last trumpet sounds, you won, and you won huge. You won everything. If your feet do not leave the ground, you lost. It's gone. No hope. Down the drain. Horrible defeat. Worst disaster you can ever imagine. I mean, this is the whole ball of wax. This is everything. So, are you ready right now? If the second coming of Jesus occurred at this moment, do you know for positive that you would be changed from mortal immortality? And do you know for sure that you would be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? If you don't know absolutely sure, or even if you think you do, I want to challenge you. Send for our free brochure, What Do You Mean Born Again? Because Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, that really makes it important for you and me to know what being born again is and to make sure we have done it. That's the reason I wrote the brochure, What Do You Mean Born Again? In layman's language, I believe anybody can understand. Hundreds of thousands of people have read this brochure. It's yours absolutely free. As a matter of fact, 
If you don't want to wait for it to come through the mail, jump online, go to endtime.com, E-N-D-T-I-M-E dot com, and there on our homepage, the right-hand side, you're going to see there uh, the title, What Do You Mean Born Again? Click on it. There's the article for you. Read it and read it all the way through. Understand it. If you read it through and don't understand it, jump on the phone, call 1-800-END-TIME, ask to speak to someone, um, ask to speak to one of our ministerial staff, and they'll come on and they'll talk with you. They'll talk to you through the brochure because let me make sure you understand one more time. Everything in your life, more important than your wife, children, your home, your job, your business, your bank account, your retirement, I mean, those things compared to this are insignificant. This is the huge issue in every one of our lives. I mean, Jesus said it over and over again when he began to talk to us about the prophecies, about his second coming. He kept saying, be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not your Lord hath come. Now, the second coming of Jesus Christ is not going to occur tonight, and it's not going to occur, to occur tomorrow. But it is coming. It may be 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 years. I don't think it'll be that long, frankly. Uh, I think it has, to, it has to be seven years from now, at least. Uh, as a matter of fact, if the final seven years began this month, and it's not impossible that that would be true, because the Bible teaches that when a deal is struck, it's going to determine the final border between the Palestinians and the Israelis and determine the status of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. When it's going to put the Temple Mount under a shared arrangement, when that deal is struck, the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon begin, and the final three and a half years to the Antichrist begins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a chance that will happen in the next 30 days. Because here's what's going on. The United States understands how dangerous this situation is. According to this article that I'm reading, the U.S. is desperately maneuvering behind the scenes to try to head off this situation. Let me see if I can actually read the article uh, for you uh, in, in exactly what it says about the United States. I can't put my finger on it right now, but anyway, the point is, the United States understands, hey, we're flirting with disaster here. We're getting ready to have Israel against the world, and now then what is the United States? So that does that end up being the United States and Israel against the world? We get the nukes. We can hold them off for a while. But, I mean, we've reached the point where we have come to believe that nobody can stand alone anymore. We're all interdependent. We've pretty much, we've pretty much divorced ourselves of our own sovereignty. We've almost set aside the Declaration of Independence for a Declaration of Interdependence. And so, what that means is, if the world community sides against Israel, Israel is probably not going to be able to hold out. Can Israel do better than Gaddafi? You better believe. But does Israel want to fight the world? Will she be able to hold out? The answer is no. We've already, we already know what the prophecies say. The prophecies say that when the Battle of Armageddon hits, Israel will fight valiantly. But Israel's going to be losing that war. The only bright spot is, even when Israel's losing the war, divine help's going to show up. And that's the second moon of Jesus Christ. The brochure is What Do You Mean Born Again? It's free. Call us 800 in time. Technology, technology, technology. I know what you're thinking. It isn't for me. Some I've heard say it's only for geeks. Well, not anymore. Digital downloading has become quite simple. So that for all of us not so up to date with technology, can do it with a breeze. Whether you're snowboarding in Alaska or climbing Mount Everest, or just simply sitting with some friends who think they know all the answers to Bible prophecy, you can now download tons of products from all your technical gadgets. Don't even ask me to name them. Go to endtime.com day or night 
And in a matter of minutes, guess who looks like a genius? Your friends will be speechless. Go to www.endtime.com. That's E-N-D-T-I-M-E dot com. Click on shop and you're in business. Don't delay. Download today and become a part of the End Time Geek Club. Death, destruction, poverty, war, disease. These are only some of the things that are ahead in the end time. Want to know more? Join us in reaching out and informing the world that over 2 billion people will die. We as a nation can't hide from this. We have to tell everyone we know about the prophesied war that will start from the river Euphrates. Call now to get your copy of World War III and spread the message that the end time is now. Call 1-800-END-TIME. Can't get enough of politics and religion? Well, neither can we. We have some great news for all of you Bible prophecy gurus. Think pre, no, not pre-trib. Different subject, pre-show. Urban Baxter will be teaching the end of the age series. Here's what you do. Just log on to endtime.com slash radio Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time and click on the live webcast button. Cha-ching, more Bible prophecy. How confusing having a pre-favorite, favorite show. We feel your pain. Call 1-800-END-TIME for more information. Well, it's so interesting as we find ourselves here uh, entering the month of September. I've been talking about it on the program here for a long, long time. Now then, Israel faces the specter of this international criminal court that the one-worlders have salivated over for many years. I mean, they've been dreaming of this court almost since the founding of the, of the United Nations in 1945, but they could never muster the will of the world community to establish it. But little by little by little, the propaganda machine cranked away, convincing the world that this is the way to run the world. Uh, now then, we're topping the hill. We have a president, Barack Obama, who is a believer in world government. They call it uh, multilateralism. You can call it whatever you want to. In other words, you run the world by multilateral leadership, by a international democracy at the United Nations. Now, we know there's a lot of talk right now. It's time to reform the United Nations. We've got to get rid of the veto power of the UN Security Council. When that happens, then there's no protection for the nation of Israel left. Fortunately, we do have a scripture. In Revelation chapter number 12, verse number 14, uh, the Bible says there that Satan is going to fight Israel. Israel is depicted there as a woman with 12 stars around her head. The 12 stars stand for the 12 tribes of Israel. And the scripture specifically says there that uh, Israel will have to run for her life. But there will be given to Israel two wings of a great eagle that she will be nourished from the face of the Antichrist and Satan for three and a half years during the Great Tribulation. I mean, this is, was in the Bible 2,000 years ago, but we're watching it happen. The United States having to use its veto power against the world community, and the world community is nothing but the one world government of the Antichrist. The Antichrist isn't revealed yet, but you better believe he is alive on this planet right now. Um, when I get to talk about this, I just want to sort of reach through the microphone and grab everybody by the lapels and say, have you been through the Understanding End Time series yet? If you haven't, you need to do it now. By the way, you can get that by digital download. You can download any or all of the programs of Understanding the End Time. And if you have not been through every single lesson, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how to say this. We have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to make this available to you. It's so critical. I don't care whether you live in Zimbabwe, Malaysia. I don't care whether you live in Australia, Norway. It doesn't make any difference where you live. I'm telling you, every person on this planet needs to go through the material in the Understanding End Time series because 
Almighty God said to Daniel, I'm going to put this in the hands of the end time generation. This is going to be information they are going to need that will safeguard them and help them to avoid the terrible things that are coming upon the earth. Well, uh, I am just absolutely stunned and overwhelmed at what's going on. Uh, let me uh, take just a moment, though. Let me back up because... I know a lot of you are starved for information from the prophecy tour here. You have loved ones with me here in the nation of Israel. Uh, what a wonderful tour it's been. Uh, we were standing on the uh, mountain, uh, actually the city of Megiddo, which is very elevated, looking over the uh, Jezreel Valley, also known as the Plain of Megiddo. It's about seven miles wide, about 15 miles long, the perfect theater for war. Well, that's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to begin. And as you stand there, you can look down and see an Israeli airstrip. And this Israeli airstrip is so neat because the planes land, and in a couple of thousand feet, they disappear. They land and disappear. They have these rare, these runways designed so that when they land, they slow down as fast as they can, and they disappear underground. So it's really tough to bomb them because all the planes are stored underground. And when the skies are clear, they can come roaring out of there, and they are airborne. So they have they've created this defense mechanism. And I call, it, I call it the Armageddon airstrip because those are the planes that are going to be central players in the Battle of Armageddon. Now, furthermore, Israel is now building the world's largest underground hospital just on the edge of Armageddon because Haifa is on the edge of Armageddon, on the, the plane of Megiddo. And they've now built this uh, hospital that will accommodate 2,000 people under ground. I call it the Armageddon Hospital because people are going to be taken to this hospital. They're just, I don't even know whether they're, whether they're finished with this yet or not. Is anybody listening to me? They're building an underground hospital, the largest in the world, at the site of the Battle of Armageddon. The airstrips are already built at the site of the Battle of Armageddon, the planes fly, uh, fly and land and immediately disappear underground. Is anybody listening to me? This is not something that may happen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely going to happen. And all of this points us to one thing. Be ye also ready for in such hours you think not your Lord doth come. Now, we get on here, we talk about the prophecies every day. And we love to talk about them. They're fascinating. But that's not really our main goal. Our main goal is to use the prophecies to prove that the end time is now and to motivate every person that falls into the sound of my voice to get ready. Because no matter if you know prophecy like the back of your hand, if you're not born again, then all you've got is worthless knowledge that will condemn you on the day of judgment. You knew what you should have done, and you didn't do it. So I'm urging you. Don't neglect. Get our brochure, What Do You Mean Born Again? And after you read it, then obey it. Because Jesus said, except a person is born again, he or she cannot enter the kingdom of God. I mean, it's an open, closed case. You must be born again or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You will not go up in the rapture unless you are born again. And so it's so critical. You say, well, this born again thing, it's really, that's, that's sort of spooky to me. I don't understand what that means. That's the reason we've written the brochure, and that's the reason we offer it absolutely free. I wish we could give every DVD away that we have. We can't do it on this program because uh, we... We wouldn't be able to be on this program. We have radio bills that come due every month, television bills that come due every month. And so we need to support those things so that we can keep spreading this word. But when it comes to what do you mean born again, we make it available absolutely free because that's, that's the basic thing that every single person needs to know. Uh, again, Jesus said, be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not your Lord doth come. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, 
In Matthew 24, it says, Two will be in a bed. One shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be in the field, working together. Bailing hay, harvesting corn, picking cotton. I don't know what they're going to be doing, but they're in the field, they're working. And the rapture happens. One goes up, the other stays behind. The Bible says two women shall be grinding at the mill. That was a common practice back in biblical days. They express it in 21st century terms as two women will be at the mall, shopping together. One shall be taken. The other shall be left. And my desire is to make sure that the listeners to this radio program will not be among those that are left behind, but you will be one of those that will be taken up from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a, this is a once-in-a-chance lifetime. You missed this flight. There's not a second flight going out. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. The Bible says once the master of the house is risen up and shut to the door, no man can open it. The Bible even says that people will stay Stand outside and start knocking. They'll start knocking. Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he's going to say, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. Well, maybe you're already born again. And you'd like to make sure someone else gets the chance. We've got 7 billion reach right now. Only 1.8 billion have even been able to our program to go through our Understanding in Time course. 1.8 billion, that's all the English-speaking people on the face of the earth. And when I realized that recently, I said, we've got to do better. We've got to get this course into the languages of the world. Well, I'm so happy to tell you that we now have been driving toward our goal. The, the budget to do this is $120,000. As of today, we are at $89,000. So we're $31,000 away to, from being able to put this in eight major languages, which will mean 90% of the world's population will be able to listen to the material that Almighty God said, I will put this information in the end time. So it's so important. So if you're out there, I want to appeal to someone today that, is extraordinarily blessed by God. I want to say to you, if God's blessed you where you could, consider making a ten or twenty thousand dollar donation. Let's get this project done. But I appeal to all of us. Maybe all you can do is a hundred dollars or twenty dollars or fifty dollars. It doesn't matter the amount. We'll all do do what we can. We'll meet this goal. Call us right now, one eight hundred in time. You also can donate at our website at intime.com. Politics and Religion is a production of End Time Ministries. We are a daily one-hour broadcast dedicated to bringing you the prophetic fulfillments happening every single day. If you would like to listen to archive programs, subscribe to End Time Magazine, find a prophecy conference, order End Time products, or subscribe to our free weekly e-newsletter called 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and take advantage of everything that the website has to offer. To be a part of End Time Ministries, partner with us and help this message go to the entire world. End Time Ministries is a partner-supported ministry. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our loyal partners and listeners for helping make politics and religion and in time ministries possible. If you'd like to have a copy of today's program, you can obtain it by simply calling us at 1 800 end time, or you can go to our website, www.endtime.com. 
You can either order the physical product from there and it'll be shipped to you, or there's also a place there for you to digitally download it and you can have it within minutes and be enjoying it in the privacy of your own home. In addition to this offer, let me remind you, this is one lesson in our Understanding the End Time series. The first one is the United States in the Bible. The second one is the New World Order is world government. The third one, Islam and Bible prophecy. The fourth one, World War III. The fifth one, Israel's God-given destiny. Number six, Israel, God's prophetic time clock. Number seven, Holy Roman Empire reborn. Eight, Antichrist and the false prophet. Nine, 666, Mark of the Beast. And number 10, the coming one world religion. I think a lot of you are going to want to have all 10 of these marvelous prophecy lessons. If you go through just these 10 DVDs, each of them one hour, you are going to know more about Bible prophecy than the average student graduating with a degree from a theological seminary. We need to know where we are right now. Jesus Christ said, I tell you these things before they come to pass so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. So the number to call one more time, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com. You can now have all 10 brand new Understanding the End Time DVDs filmed in End Time's new cutting edge studio with green screen technology and beautiful full screen graphics. All 10 hours are just 155. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME right now.